Proverbs 13 verse 22 says, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Not only do you leave for your children, but your children's children. You might be sitting there asking yourself, how do I leave an inheritance for my children's children with the meager salary that I earn? Allow me this morning to share some few ideas from a biblical perspective, godly ideas on how to accumulate wealth so that we are in a good position to leave an inheritance for our children's children. Let me put a disclaimer there. I am not a financial advisor. I am merely teaching from a biblical perspective. Let us turn to Proverbs 31 verse 10. The wisest man of them all, King Solomon, giving us advice on how to handle our finances as we try to accumulate wealth. Let us read. A wife of a noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all days of her life. Verse 13, she selects wool and flax and works with, with eager hands. Let us pause right, near, right there and look at the first principle. She selects wool. Question mark, where does she get the wool? Is it possible that she's outsourcing the wool or she's, she owns sheep where she gets it from her own flock? So principle number one, we need to own livestock. Livestock is a good investment family that it grows with our children. We need to own livestock. It's a good investment family. Let us continue. It says she works eagerly with her hands. What does she really do with her hands? Is it possible that she's got a skill that she's using to benefit the whole family? We need to teach each other, not only as even our children, that we need to learn to use our hands, develop skills. After all, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was a carpenter. He used his hand. He had a skill that he could use. Not only did he depend on the nine to five job, if he did have a nine to five job, he also, he had his hands. Paul made tents. Not only was he an apostle planting churches and ministering all over the world, the known world then, he also made tents whenever he needed to. So he had a skill to, he used with his hands. We need to learn a skill. Let us continue with scripture. Verse 14. She is like the merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She's into import and export family. The world is becoming smaller and smaller. So we need to understand the fundamentals of import and export. How do we strike a deal with our neighboring countries? How do we reach trade deals that benefit all of us? Who knows, perhaps the products that you are trying to sell in SA might not mean be moving that much. But when we go to Nigeria, when we go to Malawi, it will move. So we need to understand the import and import industry so that we grow that industry. The world is becoming smaller and smaller. Who knows who else is going to be watching this very video? They might be in Singapore. You never know. Let's continue with the scripture. Verse 15. She gets up while it is still night she provides food for her family and portions for her uh, female servants family she's also a cook she's into the catering industry this this woman of god so we need to understand what the, as long as there's people here on earth food is going to be needed so we need to consider hey 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 getting into the food industry if it means owning a franchise go for it or owning shares in these franchises go for it or if it means you develop a skill cooking be the best cook in the neighborhood that people come to you and that way you open up your own restaurant look at the kentucky fried chicken it's a global phenomenon so we need to look at things like that how do i get into the food industry because as long as there's people on earth people are gonna eat how do you become a supplier of food maybe go into agriculture uh, produce vegetables or the, the livestock we spoke about be the person who provides the chicken to kentucky fried chicken i've got no shares involved in kentucky fried chicken what i'm saying is be the provider let's continue with scripture she considers a field and buys it out of the, her earnings she plants a vineyard two powerful investment ideas strategies here she consider, considers a field so she's into real estate as well so we need to consider that. After all, we serve a God of real estate. 
So we need to consider buying land, whether it be for rental purposes, you build houses, build rooms, or open up a cemetery. Hey, 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 as long as there's people, people are gonna die, we're going to need a place to bury them. So open up a cemetery, sell graveyards. It's up to you, but you need to consider being a landlord. Yes, family. Uh, it says she plants a vineyard. See, she sells wine. <laughs> I think it's one of the oldest commodities ever. Wine. As long as there's people, there's going to be wine. But wine comes from grapes before we get carried away. We need to understand that wine comes from grapes. So you could sell grapes if you don't want to go that far. So we need to consider such options. It's there. Let's continue in scripture. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees that her trading is profitable. Her trading. What could be she trading? Who knows? Is she into stocks? Because family, we need to understand that uh, companies like Ackermans, Pep, uh, Mr. Price, these are growing companies. Go do your research and understand. You might not go into the tailor industry to make your own clothing branding. You might just buy their shares. Because think about it. Think about it. Uh, the population is growing, kids are being born, and most of the time, what do we buy clothes, comments, you see, pep, so think about owning shares in those industries. Understand how do, I, how do you get into those industries. Go study and show yourself approved. Let's continue with scripture. She, uh, it, verse 19, in her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. Verse 20, she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. Family, let us not forget charitable works, that we should always open our arms to the poor. It's a principle that if we leave a, an inheritance, if above and beyond uh, the money that you might be leaving for our children or the money that we will be acquiring, another principle that we need to instill in our kids and in ourselves is we need to have charitable hearts. We need to give to the poor. We need to be able to take care of one another. An African saying is Ubuntu. We need to have Ubuntu family. Uh, so let us not for forget that. A hand that gives, a hand that receives. Let's continue in scripture. Verse 20, she, uh, 21. When it snows, she has no fear for her, for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes covering for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. And purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes uh, his seat among the elders. So family, uh, last principle, she's in. She, she's into tailor. She's, she makes clothes, family. Why should we be limited only to the major brands? Why don't we develop our own brands? Think about it. As the world, we are approaching, what, 7 or 8 billion people? Why not start your own clothing line? Who knows? You might be the next big thing. So all I'm encouraging your family is for us to create generational wealth, for us to leave an inheritance, we need, we need to reach a point whereby we own our stuff. We need to reach a point whereby we create, not just consume. We need to reach that point whereby we create products that we can sell. Occupy till I return. That's what Jesus Christ said. Occupy till I return. 